Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now, as this is the very, very last day of year 2021, and what a year it has been globally, and obviously for Mile Concert Champions. It just seems like it goes hand in hand. Uh, but all that put aside, all that put aside and all the bad and pessimistic things shoved away. I wanted to make a bit more positive video. Well, you guys know, making just purely a positive video wouldn't be necessarily uh, uh, me. I like to keep things balanced. Therefore, I'm going to be making two videos. One of them is going to be positive and one of them is going to be somewhat fearful and cautious. This is the good one, though. This is the video to hopefully cheer you up and, uh, you know, perhaps how you guys think and hope and uh, look in the future and see the better case scenario, at the very least for me in my mind. This is going to be a video where I talk about my personal MCOC wishlist, things that I want to happen in Marvel Concert Champions in year 2020. Two. Now, I will hardly be making a controversial statement when I'm going to say that year 2021 has been quite the dog shit. Hasn't been a good year for the community, hasn't been a good year for Kebab financially, up until the gifting event. We'll see how that uh, lets them close it up, but it, it hasn't been great. And uh, a lot of people are down in the dumps contemplating what to do, whether play this game whether not to play this game but i want to have people com contemplate something else i want people to contemplate the perfect roadmap if you will out of this period into a better game into a better mcoc and the most direct specific things that i really hope to see in year 2022 I really hope Kabam delivers on. And it's going to be a mixture, obviously, of things that Kabam has said are already coming. And also my own personal kind of desires for the game. So the first and the bigger thing, obviously, is going to be the game engine. The parry dex control issues have been quite insufferable. Uh, the game, like in Alliance Quest, I think it's specifically in Alliance Quest and Alliance Wars, you know, without that compensation, like I'd be really, really struggling because, especially in Lion's Quest, you know, I never know whether my dex is going to work, whether my parry is going to work, and uh, it, it's been dodgy at best. So, like, thank God for Hercules and that immortality where you can just kind of like one HP through the quest. But even with all that, I am one of the people who frequently takes mini bosses and bosses and you know i pretty much end up using and rebar with two for most of the days it's largely because of the mini bosses and bosses but still it is 100 percent because of the issues dexing and parrying and the entire thing just put such a huge cloud over mcoc in 2021 the latter half of the year has been significantly ruined by it. We didn't start the year great with the 7.1 beta having catastrophic feedback, therefore everything kind of got delayed for that to be redesigned. And then, you know, obviously still the unspecified virus from unknown origin, uh, you know, I'm sure with no doubt hindering the progress that the band can make coding. And then all of these game issues where, you know, it definitely took a lot of bandwidth from Kabam to actually work on fixing and creating their own game engine and thus kind of delaying all the awesome and cool things that we could have gotten in its place. So the first things first, nothing, absolutely nothing in this game will happen well if the game doesn't function properly, if the game doesn't feel playable. So that's the most important thing. We need to get that out of the way. The second thing is the solo competitive mode. And obviously we have seen the solo competitive mode already in the Summer Showdown. 
but we have not yet had the chance to play it ourselves. Second thing, that is genuinely where I put my majority of my hopes that the game can be something more, can be something better, and can offer us a new take on the champions. If the game, for, if the game mode is meaningful, it will create a new meta, and it's going to be a new objective. The reason why solo competitive mode is so important is because unlike Next Abyss or 7.4 or whatever else, it offers infinite replayability. The need to make this perfect once and then keep on top of it, you know, refresh the nodes and rewards and everything else to make, make it worthwhile doing. And we can have infinite replay replayability of the content, we can play each other, and it can be the best thing ever happened to this game. The last game mode added has been incursions, and uh, again, I think incursions largely was a complete waste of time. <laughs> it's a useless game mode. You could delete it from the game pretty much right now, and majority of the players wouldn't even notice or wouldn't even care. Incursions as a game mode, I think, is a definition of a wasted effort or an effort that gives very little return. Yes, it does have borderline infinite replayability, but there is no reason to. There is no reason to play it the first time, let alone the second or third time, or very little reason to. So hopefully, it's engaging. Hopefully, it's competitive. And hopefully it's worth doing. Because no matter how good the game mode is, if it's not going to be worth doing, people will simply not play it and it's not going to matter much. So it has to have a good system, has to have good rewards, and it has to mean and matter. And if it does, if Kebab nails it, I genuinely think this is where Malcons of Champions can find its second, third, fourth, or fifth life and potentially expand further than it ever has. Lots of hopes on it. Truly. And there are infinite possibilities of it as well. Because, you know, if you're worried about your own account progression, Kabam can easily organize tournaments or seasons for like three or four star champions only, for example. So, if you are genuinely fighting only with 3-star champions, then, you know, nothing else really matters there, does it? It's just how well you're playing, what, how good your strategies are. Obviously, they will have the full-on use all your actual roster, because what's the point of amassing a big roster? But there are ways and options how to make it truly competitive and give everybody a shot. So solo competitive mode is something that I'm really, really looking forward to, hoping for. And I always am fearful to build something up in my mind and to raise my expectations. And I truly hope that this does not destroy my, my, my expectations. That being said, that being said, we need to talk about masteries. Well, mastery loadouts, mastery system has been way outdated. We don't have any new masteries. And masteries are one of the ways how to make this game exciting, more fun, more quick. And the loadout thing is super important, especially for people who play this game kind of like more actively and a bit more try hard mode. Being able to shift through the masteries, ideally free, but even if it costs like 50 or 100 units. Still, being able to shift through masteries efficiently and having these loadouts is very important. I hope it has plenty of them. I hope there are like five setups that we can utilize or the system allows us to maybe individually change defense and offense. Or I don't know exactly how it's going to look like, but I hope there is plenty of flexibility, plenty of user friendliness. And it's very important because then it's going to make the entire game different if we can change the masteries and especially if it's going to be change the masteries for free which you know they haven't promised but one can hope then that 
opens up entirely new options for clearing quests. Like the, the most basic example is that you can bring Professor X in, ramp him up, tap a button, activate recall, activate liquid courage, activate double edge with a single button, and then how entire mutant class benefit from Professor X synergy, where you know all of them start healing from poison. But if you need to use Professor X, only thing you need to do is tap a button again, take them off, switch to your previous setup. And use Professor X in a boss fight or something. How 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 wonderful would that be? On top of that, on top of that, it's been a very, very long time since we have seen new masteries as well. And I, I hope we get some awesome ones. I hope perhaps we can get uh, I don't know, poison version of deep wounds or or shock version of uh, liquid courage and double edge, you know? There, there are so many different things that could be introduced. And I hope we get to see a couple of them. I really wish there to be more mastery setups. And it's not even necessarily having like more points or more masteries. It's just having more customization and more of the feeling that that there's an entire segment that significantly affects your capability of doing that or using these champions. And uh, that that is one of the bigger things that I really do hope they stick to. They have advertised for 2022, and uh, I hope they don't fail us on that one. I really do. Another thing that they have mentioned, but I think pretty much everybody in community has forgotten, is the Alliance Reigns. Now, let me make it perfectly clear. I have a lot less idea of how Alliance Reigns would or could look like, because we haven't actually seen, you know, the Summoner Showdown version of Alliance Reigns, for instance. But I love Alliance War, and as a game mode, it has inherent problems. Also, I think at this point in the game, Alliance War has kind of lost its meaning. A lot of what made Alliance War so special doesn't quite matter as much anymore, especially from a reward perspective. Initial War reward seasons were so meaningful. Right now, they're nice. They're not game changing anymore. But alliance rights could be a new way, new form for alliances to work together. Because let's face it, if it wouldn't be for alliance, if it wouldn't be for our friends that we have made playing this game, most of us, and likely the game itself, would not be here anymore. There is a very huge portion of player base that play the game primarily just to keep interacting with the friends that they have made along the years or for that idea of being in a team, being part of a squad, an alliance, and accomplish common goals and progress together. It makes the game infinitely more enjoyable. Alliances were actually not a thing when I started playing this game. And uh, they came shortly after and they changed everything. But there... I think aren't too many ways for this membership to materialize. We have Alliance Quest, which is prestige, and we have Alliance War, which is don't do stupid things, listen to what you're meant to do, and don't die. And that's it. You know, it's not like incursions has anything to do with Alliance. It's not like solo events or abyss or any of that stuff has anything to do with Alliance. There aren't too many reasons or ways for the alliance to matter aside from alliance quest and alliance war and it's a very kind of binary world whether you are like in super competitive alliance that cares for alliance quest and alliance war or you're in more chill alliance which either cares for none of those things or one of the two but just having like a third thing stand next to both of those again could bear a very very significant impact now they have promised it to us in 2022 and the truth of the matter is, many of the things that they have promised in these roadmaps, they haven't delivered on. For one reason or another, a lot of things that should have happened in 2021 didn't. And we also know, you know, significant reasons why. Kabam has a ton of job openings, you know, ton of vacancies. They have had to completely 
redesign the entire game engine, which they're still working on. And, you know, there are reasons, as with anything in life, why stuff gets delayed. I just hope that this is one of the things that we do end up seeing relatively soon, sooner than later. Let's say within first half a year of 2022. Could be huge, could be massive. And I hope it is. I really do. We need more fresh, replayable content. Having new content is great, which is going to be my final point here. But the key to the long term success is having a replayable content, which we do not have. Right now, right now, if you log in in the game, Alliance Wars in off season, there's an Alliance quest which you can do. January is also said to be a dead month. But if we had Alliance Reigns, if we had solo competitive mode, which we have infinite replayability with, I could log in and say, like, today I'm going to do solo competitive mode and I want to, I don't know, progress or level up my points or whatever and kind of squeeze towards the leaderboard. Having replayable content that's available to us at any given point throughout the day, very important. We have incursions that I could play, but why? What have I to gain from playing incursions? Pretty much nothing. So there we are. Alliance raids and solo competition mode. And the last point, obviously, the last point is the content itself. I think right now, more so than ever, you can see that there's going to be nothing to do right now. We haven't gotten any single major piece of content this month, and I, last month we maybe had a variant 8, maybe it was month before that. But, you know, there hasn't been anything significant to come out, and the game immediately feels dead. Every other month, the game feels dead a week after the monthly update. Because, you know, first week, we, we have the side event, we have the CAV EQ that we can clear, which also has its issues, and I hope we do get Thronebreaker difficulty. And then, normally, we have buffs to test out for the first week or two. But after the first week or two in a month, even if some content came out, the game often feels dead. And that again goes back to the lack of replayable, meaningful content in the game. And I think Kabam did a good job when it comes to keeping us busy for a significant chunk of time from spring till autumn, I would say. Because we had Karina challenges, we had Grandmaster's Gauntlet, we had Summer of Pain, somewhere probably in between was 7.2 or 7.3. And all of that added to a time of activity, time of life. Summer of Pain was one of the best things that they had done because it was a weekly drop that we all looked forward to no matter what. Made for, I don't know, wonderful streams, wonderful videos, wonderful experience. People were genuinely looking forward to because they looked at us and working for something, you know, larger at the end of the day. And they need to build up on it. So my, my fifth point here after Alliance Reigns is, I do hope for abundance of fresh, challenging, interesting content. I do hope we see Karina challenges too very early on in the year. I do hope we see Return of Grandmaster's Gauntlet with a new chapter unlocked. I do hope this year we also get another Summer of Pain, for instance, because I think Summer of Pain was one of the best things I had done, as far as, you know, single-player content is concerned. I know 7.4 is on its way. I expect it to come February, I'd say. And also, I think it's time for new Everest type of content to come. Any of these things can be bypassed, can be skipped. If it means we get our solo competitive mode quicker or alliance rates or something else. But I guess the way you can sum this fifth point is I really hope Kabam keeps us busy and engaged. I don't want a single other month like upcoming January. We're going to have nothing. There is nothing to look forward to, and what makes it worse, even taking away the champion buffs kind of reduces the standard bare minimum that we're kind of used to getting. We're going to have a cam EQ, you know, some people care a lot about, some people not so much. 
you're gonna have two new champions where majority of the player base don't get those champions in meaningful rarity for half a year we're not gonna have any buffs which are the champions that people typically have and i think a lot of there is a very large group of players who look forward to the buffs more than the new champion releases and, and after that we're going to test strikers which is cool but it's only in the side event and and uh, you know lunar event which is nothing to do with playing the game it's important that people have reason to log in the game and are excited to do so january doesn't do that for anyone so i hope we don't have any more months this year like january very simple as that my final kind of two points that have nothing to do with concrete plans or ideas but my final two points on my wish list and these are more abstract wishes i guess is for the content to matter more for first four or five years in the game your progression was primarily described by content that you had completed and explored right now you can much more accurately describe your account by offers that you have purchased and by transactions that you have had brian grant showcased very well in one of his videos recently how the game has shifted more from you earn everything to you earn nothing and obviously we're not at the point where marvel concept champions is effectively just like a digital wallet where you buy digital trinkets and you know you can show them off and you can be happy that you have them and you don't do anything with them but we are much 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 closer to that side of the spectrum this entire year all of our progression all of the even offers that we had purchased an entire year has been washed away from gifting went and no matter what everybody says it didn't used to be like that it gifting went used to matter but never this much they have more than doubled and tripled the amount of stuff that you can earn versus what you can buy and my personal wishes for content to matter you see we each have our own perfect vision of the game and obviously kebab has to make money they have to make it you know worthwhile to spend but in my perfect vision of the game is if you work very hard if you're very very diligent you can earn a significant chunk of rewards spending could be a shortcut to them spending could be you know expansion of them but spending money on the game should not be the main thing quite literally you can bypass pretty much all or most of the content that has been released you split down like four five big offers throughout the year and those are the ones that that mattered spring cleaning july 4th cyber weekend gifting away that's it if you didn't do anything else but if you did those transactions if you purchased everything that you could acquire from those four events that is what mattered most it doesn't matter whether you cleared all chapters of act seven it doesn't matter whether you did grandmaster's gauntlet or not i mean obviously you could earn resources but not nowhere near as much as you can buy them and, and there was a time when there wasn't this misproportion where clearing content mattered much more than buying shit and i really hope somehow this game can go back to the point where if you don't spend you struggle to clear content where we get content that requires the revives and health potions and whatever else and if you do spend you clear content quicker and easier and day one and week one and you don't need to hoard and you don't need to struggle through it but the point was that clearing content was the obstacle it wasn't 
given. When we got variant 1 released, most of the people couldn't do it. Despite how much they wanted to, they just couldn't. They didn't have the champions ranked, they didn't have enough revives to revive through it. Right now, when variant 8 comes out, no matter what you think about variant 8, most of the people can do it. But it's just not worth doing. Or, you know, they're just going to revive through it. They might not enjoy it, but they're going to do it. That, that's the difference where money previously, for instance, was used much more on resources and revives and potions than it is now. Now, on my personal case, I have revives and health potions expiring for 11 months of the year. And then, you know, Summer of Pain or all that Algamation came and, you know, I kind of cleared my stash. But I still didn't have to really use units for any of that stuff. And then within a month, I have filled in my stash and, you know, they just keep expiring. Point where I don't really care for revives and potions. And I understand that not everybody is in the same position. But the point is that there was a time when money and transactions was used to purchase revives, for instance. You know? Most of the people don't do it anymore. A large chunk of people don't do it anymore. You're going to farm some revives, cool, but why would you when units are so much more worthwhile buying offers? Everything in this game now centers so much more about transactions and purchasing things. So my hope is that in 2022, content matters more. Your ability to clear content should matter more. Not whether you skipped an offer. And the last point, which maybe is going to hit a bit harder for some than others, is that in one of the roadmaps, it wasn't even this one, it was one of the older ones. Kabam quite specifically said that, you know, Complicated and long text, effectively, is not the point. But, but they forgot their promise. Champion descriptions are longer than ever. You can jump in out to May, look at 2021 champions, and you can see champion abilities and descriptions. I know, take a look at Nimrod now. There's nothing wrong with Nimrod as a champion, but there are 98 abilities that half of them are irrelevant or moderately whatever every special attack has two or three abilities and there are i don't know plenty of active protocols or whatnot and it's just a ton of shit uh, look at i don't know psycho man or whoever else every single champion you look at it's a wall of text every single node and game mode you look at the wall of text it's, it's too much I think, and, and here is going to be me trying to say this without trying to sound too mean to Kabam. I think people who design these things pretend to be smarter than they are. Or, what's the best way to put it? Unnecessarily overcomplicate things to make them seem more effective. I don't know. You know, put it however you want, however you will. But these champions with 50 paragraphs in their description are often less impactful than champions with five. You know, one tenth of the text. Kabam needs to go back to the idea that you don't need to have 98 abilities that largely suck in a champion to make it interesting or make people care about the champion. What you need is you know, fun and engaging gameplay and useful abilities. Compare the champions from 2017. You know, Archangel, for instance, never been buffed. Original state, effectively. And, you know, he has a bit of text. He's very simple to play. Not too much to do. Take a look at who else from 2017 that, you know, Stark Enhanced Spider-Man, you know, still can do things. He has plenty of abilities, but significantly less to read and significantly less conditional those abilities are. And especially look at the nodes. Look at the nodes, even in beginning of Act 6. 
which most people many people agree you know is not the best piece of content but but look at how long the node descriptions are and then look at 7.3 or look at the latest cav eq you don't need a bible length of paragraph to uh you know make something fun or interesting or impactful i wish kabam stopped and designers you know, stop being so pretentious you don't need 90 abilities that hardly work you need three that work well you don't need 90 lines of description on a node yeah you need two three lines that alter the way the fight is going to go down and that's it every time a new significant piece of content comes out today you spend hours reading and then half the time playing through the content is actually annoying frustrating like i think paradox is one of the stupidest things they could have done or at the very least it was implemented extremely unenjoyably but everything around paradox comes with three or four nodes and a wall of text it's not fun it's not cool it's somebody trying to pretend to be smarter than they are it's a bad idea most of the people i have spoken with agree that you know paradox sucks my heart died a little bit doing 7.4 beta seeing that paradox is in there in a full swing because i thought okay 7.3 had paradox i have done it and finally i will never have to deal with it but no paradox somehow was in 7.4 beta and every single person that i spoke to absolutely hated it most of the people didn't even well significant portion of the people didn't even do 7.4 beta because they hate paradox just one of the examples of them putting in unnecessary effort for no reason for no reward for without understanding that that is not what people like that is not what players need so ultimately this half an hour video could be summed up with the simple points of i hope kabam sticks to the things that they have promised i hope that they can implement the things that they promised well and perhaps most importantly, I hope that Kabam listens to their players a bit more. 7.3 feedback. We hate Paradox. But we get it back again in 7.4. Feedback for years. We hate overcomplicated abilities and too long nodes and stuff like that. But they make the champions with bigger, bigger ability texts and everything else. I know that not always player interests and player desires will align with the ones of Kabam. At the very least, when it comes to creative decisions, just listen to your players. Like nobody wants the Emrock character, or hardly anybody wants the Emrock characters in the game. But I guess they will be coming back, <laughs> for instance. Anyways, let me know. What is your MCOC 2022 wish list? And I'll catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So, we have all the information about the next.